Hey everyone, we're going to be talking about uh, setting up a new Descript project from scratch for uh, podcast editing. What we're actually going to do before we even get into Descript is we're going to sync and prep our footage um, before it goes in. And I'll kind of talk through as we do that, why we're doing it, why we're taking this extra step ahead of time. Um, this is for any podcast that's on video, we do this process for. And then I would say any podcast that has, um, I guess the only exception, maybe I'll say it the other way. The only exception is if you're editing a podcast that just has one host, one track of audio and nothing else, um, you can skip this step. But for any other situation, just because we're dealing with um, things needing to be in sync, especially between audio and video, if we have multiple tracks, different sample rates, bit rates, file formats, etc., it's good to get everything uniform before it goes into Descript. Um, and I'll talk about Descript sequences and why that's important and how you can actually change anything um, in your sequence down the line if you've taken this first step to make everything uniform. So what we're seeing here, I'm gonna get ready to prep this project. I have recordings from the Roadcaster Pro. So if you've never um, worked with the Roadcaster before, it packages all of its multiple tracks into one file. So if you're working with the Roadcaster Pro, you have to do this step anyways, because you need to split these out before you put it into script. The script won't read this file because it's actually 16 tracks um, packaged into one WAV file. So this needs to happen anyways if you're using the Roadcaster, but um, H6 or any other interface, I still recommend doing this. Um, so I got my two Roadcaster files here, and then I have a, um, I use Logic Pro for our DAW, so I have a sync template just set up in Logic ready to go. So I'm going to open that now and we'll use this. Now this works for, um, I'm not going to say every single DAW, but most DAWs out there. I don't know if the, um, what was this? I don't know if the multi-track files from the Roadcaster will import correctly in GarageBand. Um, I don't have GarageBand, so I haven't tested that, but um, Logic, Audition, Pro, um, Pro Tools, most of those that you're familiar with, they should function the same way. So what we're going to do to start is just drop in our two recordings from the Roadcaster and give it a second to convert, and then it will split everything out by multiple tracks. By the way, if you've never, if you have Roadcaster files, but you've never done an import before and split the tracks up, there's a video for that. It explains why there's 16 tracks, what they all refer to, and how to kind of extract those out of the file. Um, because I'm going to breeze through this right now, so you're probably wondering why there's a bunch of blank tracks, the Roadcaster video will take care of that. So I'm going to ditch everything except for the two individual mic tracks that I have. So let's get rid of these. And because the Roadcaster, like a lot of cameras and everything, does have a file limit for each individual file, um, this recording was longer than the cutoff, which is about 31 minutes long. So there's two files. So I need to drag this file up at the end and nudge it over so that it's lined up with that. And then I'm going to bring my whole project uh, view, like the whole range of the timeline, a little closer to the end there. And now these are empty. I'll delete those. So now we have track uh, mic number three on the Roadcaster full length. I bumped the two regions together and then mic number four on the Roadcaster. I have those together as well. So you could relabel these if you wanted to. Uh, we'll say mic three and mic four. You might come develop your own naming conventions for these kind of things. We use a different format, but as long as you're aware, you know, if you know who the hosts or the guests are of this, if you wanted to label this, you know, John and Mike, that's fine too. doesn't really matter as long as you're aware what's what, like three and four. So essentially what I want to do is um, I'm going to use these audio tracks to create a master length and master um, sample rate and format for the episode. So what I mean by that is once I commit and I make this sync, these files that I'm exporting here are going to end up being exactly... 33 minutes, 27 seconds, and 23 frames long. Now, if there's video footage for this, or if there's an added intro or outro, or um, anything like that, it all has to conform 
to this these master sync tracks once I export these. And you'll see what I mean if there's uh, if there's video to add. Um, so at this point, we have our audio lined up on separate tracks. We want to export these as individual tracks and throw them into Descript. So if you're using the Studio Sound plugin in Descript, all you need to do is export these as separate tracks and leave them just raw, raw audio, and you can apply the Studio Sound plugin into Descript. If you don't use that and you prefer to mix this yourself, now would be the time where you want to throw on your, um, your signal chain if you have a template or if you want to go ahead and mix these files. Um, now is the time to do that. So I've already prepped a signal chain for these two tracks. So I'm just going to bump my gain up again, because I know, um, it's the same settings on the client side. It's the same roadcaster, same room, same mics, and same two hosts every single time I, I have these signal chains prepped. I know we need a plus two gain boost every time. Um, these are kind of presets that we work with. If you're doing this from scratch for the first time, you'll need to build some of those out. So you will want to take some time to mix these tracks if you're not using the Studio Sound plugin. Um, okay, since I am doing a walkthrough of one of our actual uh, projects, I'm going to go ahead and label these with our nomenclature here. I know I have these two sync for TFV 261. Okay. Um, at this point in, depending on the DAW that you're using, this step might be different in logic. What I'm doing now is going to file export and I'm exporting all tracks as audio files. So it's going to, um, instead of bouncing and like exporting it as like a final MP3, it's going to include all the processing, but it's going to spit out, um, one audio file for each track that I have. So in this case, it's two tracks. So I want these living here in my syncs folder. Um, and a couple other settings. Again, if you're not using Logic, these will be probably labeled differently, but it should give you about the same options. So range, trim silence at file end. This means that as soon as the audio region is done and there's no sound signal happening, it would automatically cut the audio file there. Um, in this case, that wouldn't be the worst case scenario because they're, um, they're both the same length. But as you'll see in a different project, once we set that up, you might be dealing with audio files that have different lengths. You might be dealing with adding an intro or an outro in here. Um, you want to change this to extend file length to project end. And this means it's going to export the audio to my end marker, which is up here. No matter if there's audio regions or if it's silent or whatever, it's going to spit it out the exact same length. That way my end files are going to be exactly the same length. And I want them to be wave audio files, 24 bit depth. Um, I did not mention this already because the template is saved already, but we have all of our audio set in 48. So even if, for example, um, I think the roadcaster records as 48 K by default, but you know, if you're getting a 44.1 recording from your clients or for your own show, what have you, um, I recommend getting everything uniform. And because all of our shows do work on video and video records natively in 48, what we've done is just decided to convert everything to 48 K. That's just kind of a standard for us. So we're running in 48 K. We have a 24 bit, um, bit depth normalize is off because any mastering that we're going to do is going to happen later, either in Descript or in a different step, depending on your workflow. So no normalization. And then uh, the file names are going to spit out just exactly what I titled the tracks here. So I'm going to go ahead and let these guys export and I'll be right back. Okay. Export is complete. Um, real quick, before we set over into Descript, I figure it might make more sense um, to see this when there's multiple audio tracks that are not um, the exact same length. So I'm going to open a different project real quick just to show you kind of the importance of this. So here's one with, um, actually I can do one better if I go here.
Okay. So here's an example where the intro and the outro are given to us beforehand, but they're recorded separately from the interview. So we got the intro file here, the outro here, and then the two tracks of the interview uh, section of the podcast. So this is where this really comes in handy, especially when I know I have different video footage for different things. Maybe this was on Zoom, and I also have like a camera shot from a DSLR. All these things need to be synced up and go into the project into script um, so that everything is synonymous. So what we've done here is line up the intro at the very beginning, and then at the end of the intro, we have the three tracks from the interview file, and then at the end where the interview ends, then comes the outro file. And just like I showed on the last project, we're exporting everything to the project end length. So when we get out of here, let me just open up a blank session really quick so you can see what this looks like. The files that ended up with this are here. So now that this, uh, they rendered the waveform. So you can see all of these tracks are exactly the same start and end point, same length, sample rate, bit rate, et cetera. So there's no way for these to ever fall out of sync. So even though the intro ends here and has a huge gap until the very out, until the outro comes through at the end of the episode, even though this is all silent, we still have that as one audio file at the full length. So I'm just reiterating this a number of times because it's maybe, maybe seems like an extra step, but once we want to incorporate video and everything, it will definitely make sense. And especially with the intro and outro being separate, having everything the same length, it's just going to save a lot of headache down the line. So this is what it all look, um, look like when it's uh, exported and done. All right, so let's move over to putting everything into Descript. So I'm just gonna label my project, again, with our naming convention, um, name it however you see fit. So there's two ways to import into Descript. You can add individual tracks in the project files here. Just click file from computer, you can upload them separately, um, or you can drag and drop. If you're doing, sorry, let me get back to 261 here. So if you have multiple files to import, dragging and dropping is fine because it will default to prompting you um, to create a multi-track sequence and transcribe the files. Um, let's say for example, you want to follow the same sync process, but maybe at the beginning of your editing phase, you only have one of the tracks ready, but you want to get the project set up anyways. In that case, you want to come over here to project files, file from computer, and then we're going to go in and add these manually. So I'm at 261 and I have Annette and I have Sarah here. I'm going to add those in. So what you can do, even if you only have one track, if you import it in this way, you can get the file in here and you can click here and create multi-check sequence, even if you only have one file, which is very, very important because what you wanna do is you wanna tie the multi-check sequence to the composition. And if you don't do that at the beginning, you won't be able to create one in the future. What I mean by that is if I make a Oh, I have to transcribe it first, sorry. If I make a new composition into script with one track, it's going to be tied to that individual track, not a multi-track sequence. So the track and the sequence are two different things. Um, so again, just reiterating, you have to get that set up at the very beginning. Um, even if I, let's say I only had a next recording here at, the, at this time, that's fine. I can make the multi-track sequence and then I can add Sarah to it uh, later on if I need to. And once I get the video uh, files processed, I can add those into the sequence later on as well without messing up the composition, the length of the episode, all that remains uniform, remember? Because we sync that stuff um, first. So let me step back. That was just a, an example, but let me step back. So if I import these two here, what I wanna do is select both and it's gonna ask me to transcribe and to create a multi-track sequence. I'm gonna hit transcribe first. 
because once I hit this, it's going to prompt me to include them in a sequence anyways. Um, so you want to select your names for the individual speakers. And then this is exactly what you would see if you did drag and drop the files in, like I mentioned earlier. Um, it will ask you for the name of each track, and then it will prompt you to combine them into a multi-track sequence. And then it will further um, prompt you to create a composition from the sequence. You'll notice here, if I uncheck this, it is giving me the option to create two compositions for each individual track. But we definitely want them to be combined. So single composition here, done. And it will start rolling. Okay, so now we wait for this to transcribe. Oh, it's actually going very, very fast. It usually takes a little while. Okay, so here we have a raw composition with our synced files, two speakers, full length. Uh, you can notice that they're color coded and some of the waveforms are still processing. There we go. You can see the speakers change back and forth. So everything's good. So, like I said, in a sequence, you'll notice here that, again, just like I pulled up in the Logic Project, they're the same exact length. If I want to add anything to this in the future, I definitely can. Um, so we'll have a different uh, video covering how the video footage gets synced and how that gets imported into the project, if and when you need to do that inside Descript. But this will get you to the point where you can have this composition done. It is married, essentially. It is locked in to this sequence. You can't delete the sequence because it's tied to the composition, um, but you can definitely edit it if we need to. We'll talk about that in a separate video, and you can definitely add new tracks if needed. Um, you could also replace these tracks knowing that they're the same exact length and that they're synced up with one another. Let's say you noticed a, a glitch in the audio and you want to address that and upload the file. Um, if we go back into our sync project, Come on. There we go. So if we go back to our sync project, I always recommend having this saved and never changing the end marker or the length of the audio. But like I said, say you notice something with the, maybe the gain's too hot or uh, it's too low or you need to change the noise reduction, or you need to change, add a de or whatever you need to do, you can always make changes to the processing. You can uh, update the signal chain, change your plugins around while preserving the length, and then just export a new version of this file. Again, as long as the length's not changed, that's very important. And you can always replace these in Descript if you need to make an update. So uh, to do that, you would just right-click on any of these individual project files, and you can go replace, replace file, and you see all the red here, it's also warning you replacing the file. If it's not exactly the same length, it's gonna cause problems. Um, but again, we took that step in the beginning, so that makes it a little easier. Um, okay, that's all for now. Um, please, any questions that you have on this process, more clarification into why we do this, please leave comments below. We'll get back to you on those, and then we'll follow up with another video, getting the um, video footage synced for the same project, and then um, getting a, another multi-track sequence with more tracks, uh, multiple tracks, video and audio footage mixed together. Um, we'll have that set up in a different video as well. All right, thanks again.